18. As the uh, trunk starts to uh, collapse under your weight as you uh, poke and prod it with your spear, uh, you jump off. As you jump, uh, some of your uh, momentum is lost as the trunk sort of crumbles away under your feet, but you get just enough uh, that you're able to clear the sludge and, and land outside of it. And uh, you turn to your group and you're like, man, that was crit. And then suddenly everything goes black for all of you. Oh, well, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. <laughs> we live together and we die together. <laughs> Wait, you rub your eyes a little bit and you open them and you all are on the path and you're walking and you don't see the tree and you don't actually really remember what just happened. There's some sort of a, a foggy haze um, around a bend in the path and you see this gray tree knotted and rotten in the distance and you get the faintest feeling of deja vu. And then you hear <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we're going to end today's session. So, no, it's not wow, it's D&D. Uh, it's demented. It's demented, it's demented and wrong. It's Adventures in Middle Earth. Okay, okay. <laughs> actually, it's not Adventures in Middle Earth. It's actually uh, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Through the realm of light and shadow. Speaking about that, uh, debrief time. Good job, team. And Christine, I'm glad you're back. Um, okay, so first question. Uh, what was something cool that someone else did? Something cool? I think when Cyro stepped up and said, like, you are a dumb person. <laughs> <laughs> That's so that constructive. Exactly. That was what he was feeling. <laughs> but, yes, continue, Gabe. Continue. Tell us more. How did that make Andrew Hell feel? He felt really bad because of that. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was necessary. It was just and necessary. Just. For the sake of the build-up of the team. If these are people that are going to be in a group together, then they might as well learn about each other, including these little things that are important for some. Cool. Just so you guys know, uh, and I thought you acted that out well, Gabe. Uh, so my one of my character traits is I'm forthright. So... Um, I'm very direct, and I also have a negative one on charisma. Uh, <laughs> so I kind of imagine that Cyril I can't think of it too. <laughs> yes. I kind of imagine that Cyril is uh, like cool when people are doing well and like battle and taking like all that stuff, but he's got no patience if you do something stupid. So, so I, I kind of felt like like when you apologize, I thought that was great. And like, I want to be like, oh, it's okay. But Cyril's like, don't do it again. And I, I kind of feel like Will's the one that kind of calms Cyril down when stuff happens. So I thought that was cool. Uh, what, what else? Uh, what was something cool that someone did? I think the, the first time also that uh, Nebuchadnezzar went and just um, Lies the tree. It's like okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what anybody else is saying. I'm just gonna do this because that's what I'm gonna do, and that's it. I'm just tired of this. And that's it. Yep. I was it gonna was... say that too. I thought that was very in character for you, <laughs> as we're finding out. <laughs> I, I liked how Edra Howell um, tried to still like keep an eye on Haley as she was scouting, um, and and do it wisely like yeah. but just kind of looking out for her yep. i agree i like um the uh attention there to um 
what the character would do and trying to uh, be in a place where you can see both Haley and the party is, is a wise decision. Um, and it, it definitely paid off for you in that regard. So um, I like things like that. I, 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 I do like it when Haley gave me the cookie. cookie. You know, I just, I really felt like that made me feel a lot better, you know. <laughs> yep. Definitely got rid of a shadow point there. <laughs> Friendship. Surprise, cookie and raisins. <laughs> well, I wasn't here for a lot, but I do remember when uh, Nebuchadnezzar told Sorel, uh, don't waste your time looking for the horse. Uh, I thought that was like a, I don't know. I guess it was some good advice because I mean mm -hmm. we didn't need all four so at the time so I thought that was cool. Cool. That he just kind of said that to him. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Good job, guys. <laughs> so, what was uh, something challenging that um, you faced either as a player or that you felt your character face? I felt like I was um, struggling to to fill um the role of scout because it was i mean there was stealth involved but i didn't really make any stealth checks and i don't have the highest perception so i didn't really know where i could like help mm -hmm. um and there's a that, few more uh, just so you know there are more journey events you guys haven't seen yet and they will at different points call on each of the four roles so we just have an scout okay. one yet, just so you know Okay. Um, and then similarly, like, just the fact that my, um, my strengths are in social interaction. And so um, starting to like, struggle figuring out what I can do to help. I mean, I've got a short bow, but now I like, now that we're not getting long rests, I'm all out of inspiration and trying to figure out how to be helpful. And right now that's Using a short bow and being the only optimistic one. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a needed, it's a needed deal. <laughs> yeah, that's, I think that's a good point, Hannah. I was, I, I love that you actually talked to Nebuchadnezzar and gave him the whole cookie. Cause like in my head, I, I like Sarah Earl's going to be like, Haley, can you talk to this boy? Like, I don't know what to do with him. So um, I, I, I think, I think that's, uh, since we're not meeting a lot of extra people, I think communication between the team, you might have to be our counselor because a lot of stuff's <laughs> going on. So, You're our uh, camp I think counsel, that makes counsel, sense. Counsel, counsel, counselor every time. <laughs> that makes sense. I think the I challenge know, this that I had... Challenge. Sorry. No, you're fine. No, no. Oh, well, I don't know if this counts as a challenge, um, but I guess for a player, it's kind of difficult when you can barely hear the people, so you have to try and put yeah. the pieces together but i did it so oh good just, good. just know one day it's we'll all be able to sit around a table and continue this game and it won't always be here wow. um that being said i think my my biggest challenge uh of the day was having to call it at the three hour mark right there i mean obviously it was a great cliffhanger kind of place to end the uh end the session but I really want to keep going. Like I'm the kind of guy that's like, let's play for six hours. Um, and there's just so much that I now have to wait two weeks to show you guys. It sucks, yeah. but whatever. <laughs> Personally, um, we were talking a little bit uh, with communication about hearing each other. And uh, just when Ezrahel was uh, confronted about like, okay, well, what am I going to, what am I going to do now? Uh, at, uh, what is it? A horse is missing and it's not like I could control like, oh yeah, I'm going to fall asleep and that's it. But that's just the way it happened. You know, I just rolled it and rolled the die and it ended up being like that. And it's like, okay, what would a character do with all these things that we don't control in life? So it's like, how am I going to respond to it? Or how would the character respond to it? And it's like, well, it's supposed to be secretive. So it's not going to want to share it that much. It's like, well, I don't know. I'll try to say the least possible, but that was just making the situation worse. Mm. And wars and wars and at least to Cyril in that in that moment mm. so that I believe was was one of the challenges it's like okay well what's going to happen and then the feeling of guilt and of shame and what what you what uh I was being told about like well now it's like well you can't uh do something that you're supposed to be good at like the um taking like uh, standing guard during the night you know 
It's like, well, because now you don't have the trust. And even though you, th even though you're good at it, it's not like that just because of a, um, a misaction, like an action that could have been avoided if you had mm -hmm. done it differently. So I believe that was a challenge for the character. Yeah, yeah. that's good. And, uh, you know, the fact that you guys lost a horse, I think right there, we get our name for the episode. And then there were three. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh. The section check, uh, and then I, I, I think for me it was. Um, I think it's like my guy. He's not comes to terms with it yet. I don't think it might. It may never come to terms with it. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but he's used to kind of going out on his own, you know. So when he acts rationally, act kind of like you know, uncouth and does very uncouth things and gets mad. Like, that's just kind of like, you know, he's been on the road for so many years and it's, and it's been like a death march. Like it's never been like, it's like, he like knows that the road that he, he's on, it pretty much only ends one way, you know? So like, he doesn't really pay much mind to like how uncouth he is or a lot of stuff like that. And he also is very bold in his decision-making. So I think one of the things is like the challenge is like, kind of figuring out will he ever learn to kind of really adapt in or is he just got to continue to fall into the same mistakes and get lost mm -hmm. in those same mistakes you know i think that that's one of the things that he's dealing with and I, and, and i think that that will come to play as he connects with, a, with like the party more i think that those i think that those re relationships whether they turn good or bad i think can really affect how he turns out in the end because we know that of all the players uh he's the one that's uh, going down the most questionable path at the moment. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I think for me, I think uh, what Gabe had mentioned uh, just with the scene with Edrahel, that was tough because I was like, no, I think Cyril would be mad. He would stay on this and he would keep yelling at him. And I was like, I don't want to yell at Gabe. But... <laughs> <laughs> but... My boy Gabe. <laughs> but uh, as... felt... Yeah. I felt I, I felt for Cyrell. It wasn't just the fact that the horse went missing, although that's a huge thing because uh, he's lived in Rohan for so long and they love horses. Um, it's the fact that he wasn't getting a straight answer about what happened, and I think that's what kind of set him over the edge. So, uh, but yeah, it was a tough role playing that. <laughs> yeah, as the the DM, that whole interaction, I was just sitting here giddy, like. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's uh, it's wonderful watching you guys tear each other apart. It doesn't have to be something that I did. So um, <laughs> no, it was, it was great. I think I think uh, you know for for all of you, um, there were some really good character moments that everyone had, um, where you know you made decisions that made sense for your character, right? So like Nebuchadnezzar um, having the point of exhaustion and getting uh, more and more frustrated by the events that were going on. Um, it made sense that you finally hopped off your horse and attacked the tree. Like that made sense for your character to do that. And, and Cyrell freaking out on Edrahel when one of the horses went missing made sense for your character. Um, Haley's joke about second breakfast when we were talking about rations, but also like the cookie and everything else, like those that make sense in character. And, and, and Dala and Edrahel, you guys did that too. And it's like everyone made um, good character decisions, which is... Uh, always wonderful. So uh, that's something that I appreciate uh, each of you guys um, taking the time to think through, you know, what would my character do in this situation? Um, and being true to that, like you said, uh, Derek, even when it's uncomfortable, even when you don't like the idea of yelling at Gabe, but you recognize this is a game, you're not yelling at Gabe, Cyrell is yelling at Edrahel. And, and uh, it was great. It made for a, a, a pretty, pretty fun moment. Yeah. It's not against flesh and blood. <laughs> <laughs> That's what delicious. I just stepped up. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think that's uh, actually a good transition. My last question is, um, what is something that we can apply to real life from our adventure today? Communicate. Mm. Listen. Yeah. Yeah. Communicate. Listen. Okay. When yeah, you feel we're... like you're stuck in a rut, don't try and figure it out by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Always <laughs> attack the trunk, trunk of the tree. <laughs> Get to the root of the problem. Ah, uh, the root of the problem. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> that's true, though. <laughs> What's the root of the problem? I think, I think, I think, I think, and, uh, I think and, for mine, it is, it is like, it's 
uh, don't lo lo lose yourself in the mm -hmm. moment. I'm not sure if my guy has learned his, his, his main lesson there, but that's definitely something that he's on the path for. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think Nebuchadnezzar is going to have to get bit a couple more times before, uh, before he takes that one to heart. But yeah, I, I can see that he is on that journey of, of learning. So tragic art question mark i don't know you have, you'll, you'll have to stay like tuned for like oh no we're turning into a dc movie so see if this was like chronicles of Nar 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 narnia someone has to be ed 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 Edmund? and you know someone has to be ed you know <laughs> uh, as the person who is basically a uh, writer, director, <laughs> producer of this, if this turns into a DC movie, I will hang up my DMing hat for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, in the realm of... Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Through um, the realm Lord of Light of the Shadow. Talking about, like, uh, you know, uh, things you can, you can apply. Um, and it, it's something you guys haven't really... Um, encountered yet, uh, but all of you know just from the way Tolkien created Middle Earth, um, and even the 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 name of the campaign through the realm of, of light and shadow. <clears throat> um, Tolkien was always very good at embedding symbolism and metaphor into his work, and in Lord of the Rings, uh, even if you haven't read the books and you've just seen the movies, there's a, a scene uh, in uh, uh, Return of the King, where he is riding out towards Osgiliath, and the Nazgul are riding towards Minas Tirith, chasing Faramir and the other people that, that are now running away from Osgiliath. It's been overrun. And the Nazgul are attacking them as they're trying to ride oh. back to, to Minas Tirith. And Gandalf, the freaking awesome dude that he is by himself, is charging towards what everyone is running away from. And he lifts up his staff and light comes out of it. That's it, just light. And when it hits the Nazgul, it physically hurts them and they turn away. And he saves everyone. And I remember when I saw that, I was really young. Like, I mean, Lord of the Rings came out in what, like 2000 through 2002, like that gap. And when I first saw that, I had this this moment of realization, like it's not just good versus evil, it's light versus dark. And that light versus dark isn't just a metaphor, it's reality. That light drives out darkness. If I'm in a dark room, okay, and I turn on a light, oh, the the light is not oppressed by by shadow, by darkness. It, you know, darkness cannot exist where there is light. And so when he lifts up his staff and the bright light shines out and all the Nazgul are like blinded and turn away in searing pain. It was so awesome. It's one of my favorite scenes in all of the movies because it's just so simple and so pure and nails home the fact that light always triumphs over darkness. Light cannot lose to darkness. And I think that that's just something that, that we can, um, used to encourage ourselves as we go throughout our day. No matter what we're going through, ultimately, light, good, God, those things will always prevail. Even if it's dark for a while, you just got to flip a switch. And that switch can look like a lot of different things in our lives. But when it flips and the light comes on, it always prevails. Really good. Thanks, man. Uh, last two things. Um, I think when Dave was sharing about Edra Hell and how he was feeling like guilt and shame because he couldn't do something that like uh, he usually does well at, I think we go through, a lot of us go through that. Like, you know, we might mess up or make a mistake or say the wrong thing or do the wrong action or, or make the wrong decision in a moment and we feel guilt and shame and, and we, we don't want to own up to it. We want to like do anything we can not to fill that. And, and Cywell is probably not the best person to communicate this, but I think, I think his point was, it's, it's not that you did, like, it's not that something bad happened. It's just important to like own it, take responsibility. And what can we learn going forward? You know, and I, I think just for us, when we do something that might be wrong, instead of like staying in that guilt and shame, like remembering to bring that to God, because God doesn't want to yell and scream at us. He just wants us to, learn from it and be able to move on with them so 
think that was the uh, first thing. And then the second thing, uh, John, I really like how you had the archway uh, in the middle of the uh, forest and like that symbol of hope. You know, just a good reminder that even when things are dark all around us, there's always hope out there. Uh, it's just sometimes hard to see, um, but we keep hanging in there. Um, yeah, we will find it. So and, yeah, we'll bring it to us. So. Oh, definitely. That that um, was one of the more minor uh, journey events that I created for the journey, and I was uh, really glad that you succeeded on the DC to to find it because it, again, it, it was really minor. It was a really small thing, um, but it's exactly what you said, and, and that it's important to have those things. So I really hope that you guys would would spot that just to be encouraged. So. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. Any last things? Nope. All right, cool. All right, well, good job. Till the next time. Till the next good time. Good session, y'all, and we will see you next time. <laughs> this is why I stopped the recording. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, uh,